Hi, this is Claire from Penn Entertainment, and today we're going to be talking about Prodigal Son. And Ben from Ben Entertainment. And Ben, it's also Ben from Penn Entertainment. It's so it's so tough sometimes seeing you go from the new side to the entertainment side. We never know which Ben we're going to get. I do it all. I do it all. And if you guys you guys didn't notice, this is an Area One Fifty One Laser Tattoo Removal T-shirt with some aliens removing tattoos because we're in Nevada. That was really important for him to say, uh, but. Today we're talking about Prodigal Son and the new episode, and I think that, I mean, it's been getting a lot of really, really good reviews. Um, every show, I think that they're, they've they've started to really amass uh, a good following, especially for a new show with so many other possibilities to watch. Um, but I it's would, solid. It's solid. What'd it's you, a solid start. What did you think about the most recent episode? So, on the most recent episode, I. It didn't have as much crime as before. It was kind of it was definitely more of a character development yeah. episode. I felt like so it, it was good. Yeah, it was good character development because it kind of fleshes out his whole relationship with his mom, brings his sister into it, and personally, uh, I'm not sure of the actor's name right now. I'll be honest with you, but I do love the actor that plays his dad in the show. I think he does a phenomenal job of that. Uh, Chris. I'm trying to remember his name. Chris Sheen. That's his name. Is he one of the Sheens? I don't think he's one of the Sheens. Yeah, I, don't, I actually, I actually don't Sheen. know. Um, but a Sheen, but not one of these <laughs> Sheens. And we know, no, okay. Let's not <laughs> Anyways, do Anyways, no more Anyways, Sheens. Uh, so I think that actually leads me to some of the some of the things I find that uh, Prodigal Son hasn't quite mastered yet. It's just where you get, when you get these like intense serial killer procedural kind of shows, uh, there's always a balance between whether the focus is on the case or on the character development and the like a bigger plot line, right? It's got to be such a good balance too. Yeah, so I think that Prodigal Son has definitely gone in the way of we're focusing on the characters, we're focusing on the relationships. Not so like the cases are kind of weak to me, but they do end up revealing something or pushing Malcolm to recognize something about what happened and contribute. It's like every case directly impacts his growth. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that we're seeing a ton of. No, there's I, not, there's, I don't know. There's. It doesn't like develop the like the villain characters enough. It's like or like the subplots. You don't. Yeah. You don't really feel like you're watching as much of a murder show as you are watching the show of someone struggling with the possibility of being a serial killer. Right. So it's a. So you. I think Prodigal Son has either yet to figure that out, or they're definitely going the character route, and people, I think, have to keep an open mind about that. Yeah, because I people think, like kind of like solving mysteries and stuff yeah. when they watch shows, and you can't really do that as much as Prodigal Son. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that they have, like, I don't think that their in-case mysteries are that great. I think that their outside, like, overarching plot has better mysteries. Uh, like, for example, the big reveal from this episode is uh, that it was Mr. Johnson, and he was using the money bag and dressing up as a ghost to try to scare people into the meddling kids. Uh, you're thinking about the wrong show. But it uh, was the reveal that Jessica, uh, Malcolm's mom, didn't know about uh, the murders, which was a question that was brought up in the previous episode, but this time uh, it was revealed that she didn't know about the murders. She just thought that there was something that was going on. Uh, so she And she blames herself really deeply for being suspicious of something that was happening with their husband, but not uh, trying to uncover it and potentially having uh, to save some people's lives. See, I thought that was a good development, but back to what you said a moment ago as well, I thought traditionally in the arc of a, in like in the arc of a television series, you would have that episode come later in a season. You would you would build the character and the interest in them out by having them solve those serial killer cases for a while. And once you're really invested in him and his mom and all that, then you would have an episode entirely dedicated to them. And it would see people I think would appreciate it a little bit more because they've bought into the character more. Do you feel that way? I think so. I think you needed a little more time of like, mm, what's their deal? What's going on with them before they started to dig into the mysteries? But I think that what's what they replaced the whole questioning his mom uh, plot with, they put in, well, they introduced his sister, the idea of her, his sister connecting with his serial killer dad. So the fact that they, that they did that- was a that, fast movement too. I predicted it though. I oh, actually, yeah. I actually, from episode one, I was like, I would be really great if you could see Ainsley, who has had, like, who doesn't even remember her dad, be the one to, now connect with daddy 
serial killer, and then uh, have you can only predict the lottery numbers would be rich. That, this is true. But having, but thinking that she would be the one who seeks him out, and then maybe becomes perhaps dad's new protege or something. You always knew that like bad things were gonna happen to her because she was the untra the less traumatized, more she well adjusted was like a one. Little baby when he was a serial yeah. killer, right? Yeah. So, um, so I'm really glad that they replaced that really big plot point of his mom with the with his sister. I thought that was a good and they and they do really keep with that out. theme of like family of kind of dysfunctional let's put important. the fun and dysfunctional family. Uh, that's really I think Because the serial for. killer dad, to his credit, does seem to really love his kids. Yes, whether it's out of his own narcissism or ego because he's the one who, you know, who contributed to making. Or just because the actor's so he's, very talented in expressing very his he's, thoughts. He is very He seems good. to really, like, I really believe he loves his kids when he says it. No, that's, and that's something that's like... I think they've really built his character up in a in a cool way. Um, it's like, is he one hundred percent evil? And Christine, or is he just crazy? And Christine does a really good job of playing somebody who's very convincing and emotionally manipulative. And it's not always to, easy to do that because you have to convince an audience that this character is smart enough and emotional enough to. You know what killed do me that. on that though? Yeah. Is in the first episode the way he solves the problem is he grabs the axe and he cuts the guy's arm right off. And then he just like loses so much intensity. It's like that was such. And to this credit, that was such a high standard to deliver in the yeah. first episode. I feel like he's lost so much intensity after that. Uh, he did. He did almost kill someone. Almost. In uh, one of the more recent episodes. So I. So there's still that kind of manic. Uh, Ed just teetering on the edge of a psychotic break aspect to Malcolm for sure. Uh, he definitely was. But it was like the quick thinking so because if the guy's arm hadn't gotten cut off, he would have died. Yes. Like that was clear, and I kind of liked how it was like because he's manic, he was able to solve this problem when other people probably either would have died with the guy or would have left the guy. Yeah, but that's why. That's why. I Question their balance between um, what's it called? I mean the character the development, character development and, and, and so development. I, I think it's very important for them to figure out that balance. But so far the characters are really compelling. I, I yeah. give a huge hats off to uh, the actress who plays uh, Malcolm's mom. Her name I will put up here when I figure it out. Uh, she has really just been, I think, a really standout actress for this one. I think that she's like conveys that I'm a wealthy socialite who expects things out of my life versus like I'm a loving, doting mother who is extremely protective of my kids. So I think she, she's definitely a bit of a drama queen, but she's also drama queen. But she has her priorities straight. So I think that, uh, I think that's a. Uh, She's, she's done a really good job of portraying that character. Uh, anything, I mean, I just, yeah, at the end of the day, I just want their plot. Yeah. Like, they're, they're in episode plots. You want, you want to solve a mystery. Plots. I, yeah, I want you to wanna like You want to watch the show, and as you're going, be like, yeah. I wonder who the murderer is. Can I figure this out before it's over? So, actually, what was cool about the first episode is that they did, like, sort of a, uh, like a like a puzzle on Twitter that you had to solve by solving like some clues and stuff and like then you got this answer and whatever. Like you, it was, you didn't didn't solve the puzzle, game. it leaves you in the same predicament though. No, but it was, it was like, I thought it was cool that they got uh, people more into that like problem solving, crime solving uh, at, like element that the show like this has to have, right? Well, hopefully we'll be able to get more of that crime solving element as the show goes on. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Again, this has been uh, Claire Waugh and Ben Goldman, and uh, I'll be signing you out. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Follow our YouTube channel to watch our featured videos and original shows. See you there.